you guys keep asking me stuff about the iMac 2010 and so I decided to do this little update video since uh, the last videos uh, I made with the iMac became so popular and people ask so many questions I also learned quite a lot more about these systems obviously since um, there are many configurations and many people want to do different things and so I know now know a lot more than um, previously basically uh, so first the most frequently asked question almost is how's my iMac doing what's the status on my iMac well the status is still the same I still don't have a motherboard and I would need a motherboard because I ripped the socket for the monitor connection it was 100% my fault I was not too gentle with it and so I ripped it out and now it's dead also I didn't find anybody who could fix it not for a reasonable price so the best way is just to get a motherboard so some more information uh, f uh, for you guys if you get a replacement motherboard you have to have the exact same year um, you cannot swap in for example a iMac 2009 shell uh, a two in, in a 2009 shell a 2010 motherboard it doesn't work also same with like a 2011 motherboard in a 2010 shell because they have different connectors for monitor and a variety of other sensor cables are different and uh, it's it's not possible even though they look the same <laughs> basically when you glance at it first glance they are not they have different connectors and so they will not fit also the ports on the back are different if you know the 2011 IMAX have Thunderbolt and the 2010s I didn't have yet so I cannot swap in a motherboard from a 2011 in mine it has to be exactly the um, 2010 so that also means unfortunately you cannot like convert a 2010 to a 2011 one it, it doesn't work unfortunately the next very frequent question is what is the best GPU I can put into an iMac and I can't really say for certain for a long time I thought it was the 770M the Nvidia GTX 770M which is already a really powerful card for an iMac but then somebody told me he purchased an 880M which is even more powerful and newer and I can basically say I don't know what's the best one even don't get don't even get me started on the AMD ones I have no idea there but I know that the Nvidia MXM GPUs like from Alienware laptops from their laptops and stuff they will work um, the Kepler cards Kepler based cards that's an architecture Nvidia used these all are guaranteed to work that means 765M 770M 880 probably too it's the same architecture uh, so the reason um, why I don't recommend like the 770M or something is basically because they're expensive and I wouldn't really I personally wouldn't like buy a graphics card that's like 260 plus euros for the 880M and put it into an iMac from 2010 or 2011 which is nine or ten years old I just wouldn't do that but of course that's up to everybody so yes you can put in like really fast graphics cards I just would actually be interested if the power supply could handle it some people had um, had concerns about the power supply I can tell you the 765M works beautifully there's nothing wrong uh, but like an 880M I, I could imagine like it would need a little more oomph but since it's after all a laptop grade GPU it might as well just be fine so I wouldn't worry about that too much the next very frequent question is how do, how do I install a Mac operating system without the boot screen because when you swap in the 765M for example you don't have a boot screen anymore since uh, you would need a Mac branded graphics card and none of them are uh, when you get on eBay and buy like a 770M 765M they're all non Mac based so you will have no boot screen no brightness control and no ability to switch between uh, startup disks well the reason for that is I don't know because Apple's a bitch sometimes you can install an operating system just you need another machine so what you basically have to do is you have to install the operating system on a different Mac and then 
2D hard drive of the iMac. And so then you can swap in the hard drive of the iMac into the iMac and it should boot. That works from versions like 10.10, 10.11, 10.12, 10.13. On the natively supported ones, you don't have to do anything. You just install an operating system or you clone it or something and it should boot up. Not so much on Catalina or Mojave. Also, I had this one question. Now that I have a metal-based GPU, can I install Mojave or Catalina normally from the App Store? Uh, no, you can't. Uh, after all, it's still a 2010-2011 iMac, and that is an unsupported machine by Apple. So no, unfortunately, you cannot install the operating system from the App Store just because of you have a metal-based uh, GPU now. What you have to do when you want to install, for example, Mojave is... It's way more complicated than installing a natively supported OS. You will have to, first of all, again, install it on a different Mac. And then you have to patch, run the, the patcher from DOS Suite 1. And you have to patch it for the iMac. So for if you have like an iMac 11,3, which is mine, for example, you have to patch it, even though you're on a Mac Mini or MacBook Pro or whatever, you have to patch it for an iMac 11.3. And also, you have to uncheck legacy video card support, because what that would do is it would kind of enable the, the original graphics card to work, which uh, they don't work great, they have graphic problems and all that. But you have to uncheck that, and then it should work. It should, I say that because I never experienced it myself, I've never really gotten it running, but this way it should be possible. And for the Catalina, it's, it's a similar process, but you have to manually kind of enable the patcher since um, the patching process takes place uh, actually when you install it so what you have to do is you have to kind of patch it manually so uh, like in the Mojave patcher I will link you uh, uh, some resources down below how you can do that so that's what you what you have to do you still need the patcher from DOS 2.1 there's there's no other way you have to use their patcher since um, it's not an officially supported machine. And next question is, how do I flash the GPU? Because it has been done. Yes, you can flash the GPU, the Kepler-based cards. For example, you can flash them to have a boot screen. And I have no bloody idea, guys. Um, I know there's a there's a a page on Mac Rumors from the guy Nick so and so he made that and kudos to to the guys who made this possible I, I totally appreciate that however they are lacking a guide uh, in my opinion they don't have a proper guide you need to do this and this and this it's kind of all over the place you need a patcher like a, uh, not a patcher you need a flasher which you then connect to the like the chip on the motherboard and flash the firmware on there and i have no idea guys i never found a a proper guide and they should really do that since it's a it would make life a lot easier with a boot screen, for sure. So that were all the most, in, most frequently asked questions. Now a little rant from my side. Now the important stuff is uh, out, of the, out of the way. Now we can actually rant a little bit. What I mean is, uh, I was so close to actually fixing this guy up. I ordered a motherboard exactly, as I said, for 2010 uh, A1113 mid-2010 iMac and what you have to do you have to send me the right board guys because if not then um, yeah it's not gonna fit and so what what this this guy did is he sent me a motherboard for a 2011 now he did take it back uh, you know uh, it's 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 not a problem he, he took it back with shipping and all that and he re refunded me that's that's fine totally okay However, he wasn't clear, like he had no idea he had a 2011 board, he advertised it as a 2010 board, and that's a big problem. So yeah, I got kind of pissed and I kind of said, you know what, <laughs> screw that, uh, and I'm now on a hunt for motherboard. And actually guys, uh, my honest opinion, I'm only doing this for you now at this point, because my honest opinion is... I, I don't need this machine anymore and I'm very fed up with it. It's been now broken for months and because I broke it, yes, I know, but still it, I would need the stupid motherboard. And what pisses me off is that the prices for these motherboards are outrageous. You pay north of 130 bucks plus shipping for a 27-inch iMac 2010 motherboard and that's just 
a motherboard for a machine that's 10 years old, I pay 130 and that's the cheapest one I could find, for example, yesterday, 130 on eBay. And what I mean is I can buy a pretty advanced, good, fancy motherboard for a PC for 130 bucks, which is uh, having the latest socket in DDR4 and all that. Yeah, and just because it's um, designed in California, I guess it's it's worth so much. But that pisses me off because, first of all, I would spend 130 bucks on a machine which I don't even use anymore. And um, it's uh, yeah somebody I know, and it's not worth it for me because I wouldn't I wouldn't need it. And also 130 bucks, you know, it's not sp Square Space that's giving me that or NordVPN or what all the sponsors are from YouTube. I have to pay that from my own pocket. You know, 130 bucks, 140, 150, these go for. I I can't go on like a two day trip with my with my friends, and uh, I would like it more. But yeah, not right now, obviously, with the quarantine. But you get the idea, you know. It's, it's and and I'm fed up with this iMac. I wanna, I wanna. I know I spend a lot of money on computers I don't need. I know you're gonna write that, but still, I, I would kind of like to do other projects at this point than this stupid broken iMac. But yeah, I will fix it eventually, I guess, when I get a good deal on a motherboard or a donor machine. But yeah, it's really hard, guys. And I know you will write me that, oh, it's so easy, just go on eBay here and there and this and that. The problem is uh, I live in Austria, which is a, a country with only 8 million inhabitants. We are not a big country. And so most of the stuff comes from uh, other countries. Actually, most of them come from UK, which is weird in Europe, or some are from Germany. And so the shipping is always crazy expensive. I don't know why uh, do they ship it with like a... Uh, supersonic chat or something always like 20 bucks 30 bucks even sometimes and also there are just not that many around uh, there are not so much motherboards for IMAX I can buy uh, I would either have to buy the whole machine and there are not so many around because there's probably not such a big demand for these things anymore and if I find a motherboard that's working, then it's 130 upwards plus shipping. Now, what I find interesting is that the motherboard prices for the 21.5 inch IMAX, the smaller ones, are quite a bit cheaper. Actually, they are really cheap. You can get a working one. I saw them without CPU and RAM for like 30 bucks, 20 bucks. That's fine, you know. But when you get to a 27 inch model, then it's 100 plus 130 150 bucks i don't know that why that is so uh, it, it's 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 weird and maybe it's they're more sought after i don't know but yeah this is my rant about this imac uh, i will eventually fix it i guess but you have to wait i have to get a good deal and now with the quarantine the shipping is all slow and you know i'm not in a hurry yes so um, when the video comes, it comes. I will, of course, make a video when I fix it. It is quite a really exhausting job to swap this motherboard. It's uh, it's a pain in the ass, but I will do it. Get it working. Probably sell it then. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope I could answer your questions. If you still have some, of course, I will try to answer them on either my website or on in the YouTube comments. And yeah, so thank you for watching. See you later. A very frequently asked question also was um, what is the best GPU you can put in an iMac? What is this guy doing? Can you see that? It's like literally driving in the field there. What? Anyway, <laughs> okay. We're all going nuts here in the quarantine I guess.